Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Ron Tabor, pastor of Grace Bible Ministries in Ogden, Utah, and, and I wanted to just share a word this afternoon, a word to the LDS people uh, out of the scriptures, out of the Holy Bible. And recently God has given me a passage of encouragement as it relates to the condition of the church today. It's in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. And God's word says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Verse 20 says, The beast of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, to my chosen. As we stand in Utah, it is geographically a desert out here in, the, in the, the western part of the country. But spiritually also, it is a wilderness, a desert, and God is doing a new work in Utah. God is bringing the living water of Jesus Christ into a place where he has been absent. As I think about this state, I think how there has been no revival in the state of Utah. Revival has swept the United States twice in our history. And of course, you have the Bible Belt where revival is constantly uh, a daily thing and, and uh, they have potlucks before every revival, which is about every week. But Utah has been, been left out of that revival and God is doing a new thing. And we see the foundations being shaken and that people are seeking truth. They're hungering and thirsting for something more than religious ritual and, and the bondage of obedience to so many rules and so many regulations and requirements, things that God never intended for us to fulfill. And so the gospel of Jesus Christ is washing across this land and a new thing is happening. God is causing the fir tree to spring up where there were thorns and briars. And this message is a part of that process. And so I want to share with you the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. What God has proclaimed is his good news. You know, the word gospel uh, means good news, euangelion in the Greek. And first of all, the apostle Paul gave a warning in Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, that if anyone came and preached a different gospel, a different version of the good news that he preached, he said, let him be accursed. He said, in fact, even if an angel from heaven were to come and contradict the good news that he had proclaimed, he said, let that angel be accursed. We stand in a land today that is founded upon a gospel, a different gospel, another testament of Jesus Christ that was brought into the world through a man named Joseph Smith and through the angel Moroni who revealed to him the golden plates that contained the contents of the Book of Mormon. And we know that that is another gospel, a different testimony, which Paul warned against. So what I want to share today is what the gospel is, the gospel of God that Paul preached and that we have believed and is washing across this state, bringing new life to people who are simply trusting in Jesus. The gospel is simply this, and I'll paraphrase the text of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. The gospel has three fundamental elements of what God has done for sinful man. First of all, the gospel says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You'll notice, first of all, that the good news is not a commandment for us to do more or work harder to somehow maybe please God, but we see that God is acting on behalf of sinful men and women in the person of Jesus Christ, that Christ has died for our sins, according to the scriptures. All of the Old Testament foretold of the coming Messiah who would come and take away the sins of the world. Isaiah chapter 53 is very vivid in the suffering and the redemptive work of the coming Messiah, which was Jesus Christ. But that Christ died for our sins. You see, God took our sins and placed them upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He suffered and bled and died because of the iniquity and the sin and the evil that we have, have done. And we do. Look, I'm a pastor of a church and, and I still sin. But by the grace of God, I'm born again. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life because Jesus Christ paid for my sin. All of it, 100%, as far as the east is from the west, God has cast away my sin, having placed it upon Jesus, who was punished instead of me. That's good news for sinful people. 
The second part of the gospel message is that Christ was buried. Now this seems like a small part, but it's essential because it's it bears testimony to the fact that Jesus Christ was not just wounded upon the cross and swooning and somehow came out of the, the tomb, but that he paid the penalty for our sins. He died. The wages of sin is death. And Jesus Christ died. In fact, his final words were tetelestai in the Greek. It's finished, paid in full. That means I am free. Christ died. He paid the penalty. It is paid in full and I am set free because of it. Finally, the third point of the gospel is that Christ rose from the dead. He conquered death. Now look, there are lots of gurus and prophets and teachers and leaders and spiritual people all over the world. But if your guru or prophet did not raise from the dead, then you need to abandon that prophet for the one who is risen, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ conquered death by his own power. And listen, if he can self-resurrect from the dead, then he can fulfill his promise to give everlasting life to anyone who will simply believe upon him. Jesus Christ is risen. He is all that you need for eternal life. Now, finally, how do you receive this gift of eternal life? How do you do it? Do I, do I join a church? Do I, what do I need to do? Well, the beauty and the simplicity of the gospel is that this is received by nothing more or nothing less than faith in Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 16, verse 31, the apostle Paul was asked, what must I do to be saved by a Philippian jailer? And here's Paul's answer. Believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You see, your salvation is not based on your works. It's based on Jesus Christ. And we receive that free gift by simply believing. You trust him. When I was 16 years old, I heard this message at my dinner table. And I was challenged, Ron, do you want to receive Christ by faith? And I did. I, at that moment, I believed I found eternal life in Jesus Christ as a young punk at the age of 16 sitting at my dinner table. Folks, that's good news. It's liberating. There's no need for the bondage of religion, the shackles of man-made religion that cannot set you free. In fact, they enslave you to your sin. They seal you to your sin instead of liberating you. When Jesus Christ came to set us free, and I'll close on this, Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. And by the grace of God, we're here today. I'm here with my brother Lance and, and, and others, the sisters in Christ here. And we're here to bring the truth that will set you free. If you will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. And I testify these things in the name of the risen Son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen.